And the Dow topping, at least briefly, 40,000 for the first time ever. The Nasdaq and S&P 500 touching intraday records as well on hopes that rate cuts are likely to come this year. And joining us now is David Bonson of the Bonson Group. Good afternoon. So, David, the, the Dow kissed 40K uh, and then ran away. S&P's flat around 5,300. If you're a long-term investor looking to deploy capital, do you do it with an eye on the Fed or do you wait until the market's not about watching the Fed anymore? Well, you have to do it with uh, individual investors' risk tolerance in mind because of timing risk and entry risk. Statistically, there's no question the better thing to do is to deploy sooner when you're talking about the Dow. The S&P being market cap weighted and being so top heavy and our, us be, just being very valuation conscious, I'm a little more hesitant to put capital into the index in that sense. Uh, the Dow tends to have more value-oriented names that doesn't have nearly uh, the, same, the same valuation issue. Uh, 40,000 Dow, you're investing for 100,000 Dow. It's going to happen in the lifetimes of people that are in their 40s and 50s. It just is. It, uh, but I think right now, in terms of timing and the Fed and certainly the multiples you're buying for the S&P, uh, it could pay to be a little patient. Mm, okay. David, I do want to get your thoughts on earnings and, and the role that earnings growth is going to play in this market as we are hovering right near record highs. I mean, look no further than Walmart. It, it finished the day up 7 percent, a big move for that name. It pushed consumer staples higher. It was the only sector in the S&P to actually finish today higher. And, and a key part of it wasn't, wasn't just the beat on the quarter, but the fact that they raised their full year guidance one quarter in we're seeing some of that uh, among other sectors and, and other companies and certainly among strategists who think that earnings growth is actually going to be stronger through the second half of the year. How do you see it? Well, the problem is that so much of that is priced in. You know, we're big holders of Walmart. We've been invested in it for over 15 years. And a 7% move in Walmart today came because it was not expected. The problem is that at 22 times forward earnings for the S&P, they're already expecting 11% earnings growth this year and 13% next year. And that it requires a revenue growth and a market multiple that, to me, is very priced for perfection. Perfection. Walmart wasn't priced for perfection. A number of consumer staples names this uh, quarter have not been priced for perfection. That, to me, is where investors are going to find better value. David, I'm going to go back to you on this one before I pivot to Lori, uh, because I know you have thoughts on semis. I know you're invested in some names in the broader semiconductor space. Your thoughts? Well, for us as dividend growth investors, it's an interesting space because there's names that don't offer anything, and then there's names that are really quite robust. Broadcom is a name we own uh, quite significantly, and, and different than Applied Materials that just came out, different than NVIDIA that has virtually no yield. You understand Broadcom is paying you 30% per year on what you invested 10 years ago. The dividend has grown 33 times and the stock price is up 33 times. 2,000% over 10 years, but the dividend growth has, drive, has driven it. That's why we like semis that have that cash flow growth. Texas Instruments and Broadcom are in our portfolio, but we can't get excited about the more speculative stuff like NVIDIA at 75 times earnings. Hmm. David Bonson. Thanks for joining us and kicking off the hour after we hit record highs during the trading session for all the major averages, but ended up drifting lower to end the session.